All right, welcome everybody. We've got, uh, we gave you the pro-choice side of things a few days ago. Now we're going to be talking with my friend Brendan Dahl here. He's going to be doing the pro-life side of things. We're just going to get everything squared away so that we have watch parties on our own personal pages. But come on in, hang in for just a second here. Brandon, I'll let you know when I've got it live on mine. All righty. Yep, I'm, I'm in there. So it didn't cut me. I'm just probably blacked out for a minute, but I can still hear you. Sure. <laughs> and hearing is really half the battle. All right. <laughs> and I'm going to start this watch party. And I'm going to say, join us. And there we go. Okay, so the watch party is now on my page as well. So there we go. You can so find I'm going to share it. Cool. Find it from there. All right, everybody. Well, welcome. Welcome. We're going to get started here in just a couple of seconds here. Again, uh, this is a follow up to, uh, well, you know what? I'm going to say that during the main show because everybody needs to, during the main segment because everybody needs to hear that part. All right. So, uh, Brennan, you ready to start recording? I am ready. All right, man. Well, three, two, one. Let's do it. Welcome, everyone, to the We Are Libertarians Daily Podcast. I'm your host, Hody Johns, and I am joined by my friend, actually real-life friend, Br <laughs> Brendan Dahl. Brendan, how are you doing today? Yep. Good. How are you guys doing? Doing doing great, man. Doing great. It's great to have you on the show. I uh, I Thank am you. so glad that, that you take an interest in, in that type of things. It's it's always nice. You know, my, my personal life, I am very much supported in that my yeah. family loves me and says, man, I'm so glad that you're doing what you're doing, that you're happy doing it. But not many viewers, so you no, are, you're no. one of the few <laughs> viewers of all of my uh, my content. I think my family just knows where I stand on all the issues, so they're like, "Well, I don't really need to follow them along," you know. So, but it's nice <laughs> yeah, when yeah. somebody actually follows follows you along here. Yeah, so. absolutely. So, uh, Brennan, we we talked about the pro choice side of of the issue with Alicia Dern um, just just yes. a couple of days ago. And and I of course wanted to get your your thoughts on on being on the pro life side of things. I created a post where I, I attempt to split the wickets on this. I am very much pro choice politically and very much pro life personally. And so I entitled her pro choice uh, pro choice in the law and yours pro choice in the culture. And so we're just going to talk about. I, I want to present both sides in his best of light as I can. Obviously, yeah. I, I got to play a little bit of devil's advocate on a few things, but I just wanted to present both both sides and kind of the, the you know, flesh out the worries as well as the intellectual arguments to have there. So, so just tell yeah. me about uh, your feelings on pro-life just in general. So I guess I could say um, kind of when I was younger, I would say probably late teens, early 20s, I really didn't have an interest in it. I was too young to probably even really care about it. So I kind of had that opinion of um, pro pro choice. I mean, I don't I don't really care, you know, pro choice. But as I got older, um, you know, serving in the military, um, kind of experiencing a lot of stuff in my life these last probably twelve years um, since kind of becoming an adult, um, I've kind of started changing my opinion on that, um, and I mean nowadays it's it's. It's impossible to not see politics every day. It's just the, the world and the culture we're in, especially these last two years, two, three years. Um, so just having it in your face a lot, um, it's it's almost kind of cemented that that value and, and almost made me even more firm on my decision to be pro-life. Um, so that's just kind of the kind of the gist of it <laughs> sure it's the introduction i think it's a good pl as good a place as any to start they it, it's hard because it is a youthful thing i think one of the difficult parts on this issue is the more science that we add to it the less clear the issue has become yeah and, yeah. and i just i have and, and for me i love to get to that black and white point where i just say well clearly this side is right all of the time absolutely now, yeah uh, I don't want to beat around the bush here. All of this discussion was based on a post that I made uh, where I presented both sides of the issue as best I could. And I think that that post went really well because the the the, the trolls on it were ignored, which is what I Absolutely. want to have happen. I have friends and I love them and I love passionate opinions. 
but I created the post and I specifically said at the beginning, this is for people that are able to be open-minded about it. And some Absolutely. of the not open-minded people decided to join in and they were not responded to, which is my ideal. <laughs> That's what I yeah, always hope for. Yeah. You know, when, when somebody's <laughs> like, man, like, no, don't feed the trolls, please. And thankfully exactly. they got ignored. So um, <laughs> now, now let's talk about just some pro-life things. I know my, my experience of it might might match maybe some of your understanding or your experience with it. I of course worked at a, at a hospital. I explained this before, but I'll explain it again. I just I didn't like what I saw. I think it's one thing to say you're pro life or pro choice intellectually and philosophically, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when I saw them performed and saw them practiced, I definitely did not get a great feeling. It's yeah. hard to mandate my feelings, <laughs> but yeah. at the same, you know, in the doctors, we didn't do anything that I would, I guess, say is blatantly unethical, especially if you just consider it a clump of cells. Mm -hmm. But to watch a fetus wriggle away from a euthanasia needle sucks to yes. see or to hear the sound of the clamp going down on the brain sucks. And yeah. it's just one of those feelings that I think I can't get away from. And so for me, it, that experience, even more than my intellectual experience, because I think your morals have to come above anything that you could try to inform or tell yourself, and my personal morals on the feeling, I just don't know that there's an intellectual argument that could be made that says, oh, yeah, that was cool what happened. Like, that was totally, yep. totally legit. I mean, does that match with what you, what would you have to add to that? Um, yeah, I mean, I can, I can dive way into that. I've got a lot of... Um... A lot of things I want to say about that whole issue, but I, I do agree with you. Um, I guess my whole my whole agenda is obviously um, people that have made up their minds, their minds are made up. So th that was kind of why I wanted to come on here. Um, obviously, people that are pro-choice are pro-choice. They're going to be pro-choice. They don't want to hear anything pro-life, but that goes for pro-lifers as well. Myself, mm -hmm. I, I don't have any any inkling to want to – to ever want to change my mind to that side, not, not stubbornness of it. Um, it's just, I'm very set in my ways and, and my, my process of, of being pro-life. Um, like you just explained when you, I read that in that post that you put up that night and it just hit me. It hit me. Um, especially with, with this whole issue being all over the news lately because of Alabama and Georgia and Missouri. Um, so I, I kind of already had, the feelings kind of brought into it again because of, uh, of the things that were happening there. But that post, the way you worded it that night was really to me, um, that it, it kind of struck a chord with me, I guess you could say. Um, I, I personally have never, have never been in an abortion clinic, Planned Parenthood. I've never, I've never been there. I've never seen the process. I know the process. I've heard the process. Yeah. Um, I have never witnessed it, and I don't think I ever – I could ever stand in that room and, and go through like what you just said that you went through. I would have bailed out of that room long, long before then. So uh, I guess the reason I really wanted to come on here was for the people that are on the fence, the people that, that really don't know – which way to go with it you can think well i could see the reasons for it however you know like you just explained that 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 process of how it's done just sounds barbaric you know those people that are kind of in the in-between um are really the people i i want to i want to focus on and and kind of explain the pro-life side and explain and explain the reasons i feel so passionate about about that you know i know it's brought up all the time well it's just a clump of cells it's just a it's just a clump in in my opinion, it's it's really not. That is a that is a strand of DNA that nobody on this planet, past, present, or future, will ever have. To me, that is a very special gift that that happened, and to be able to just take that away um, and and have have that that decision, you can make that decision to end it because of convenience or because of whatever whatever. Um, they feel the re reason to have to do it is to me that that is more than a clump of cells. That is something that is something unique that will never be seen again. Right. So. And, and, and it really is, I, I think, and the, the one thing that the science, I guess, to me 
does confirm, even though people will say, well, this is when it becomes a human life. We acknowledge it's life right away. Yes. But that, but that it, when it does it become a human life? When is it a human being, I guess, is what we want to say. And some people, yep. I mean, everybody's got their own standard when they, you know, a lot of people say when it's viable outside of the womb. But, uh-huh. but there's many lives that are not viable outside the womb without intercession that because of science, we can now make viable they just need some help, you know, exactly. so that's that's a gray area. And then, and I, it, it, yeah, it, it does develop its own genetic code immediately. And so the, and that is hard. You know, it slowly develops the chromosomes and, and completes that formatting. But it begins that process of the genetic formation. Yep. You know, the zygotes and everything just happen immediately. And so it, it's hard to get away from that when if you say, well, as soon as it has its own DNA, well, that's conception, unfortunately, you know, and yes, so that's yes. And and. And here's the thing is, is when we let our hearts be our guide, I think some people say, well, morning after pill when it's still early on, maybe doesn't seem so bad when they hear the cracking of the skull, like I'm describing that feels worse, you know? And so, and so it is just, it is this total gray area. Now I am going to, I was a, I was a devil's advocate for Alicia on a couple of things. Uh I do want to keep this mostly focused on pro life, but I do want to bring up a couple of issues for you Mm -hmm. and how you would explain them just in fairness so the let, let's talk about um let's talk about invasion of privacy i guess a little bit it is hard okay. to be a pro-lifer and really stand as a strong advocate for privacy a lot of the time the reason uh-huh. it is protected and roe v wade it protects it under the right to privacy roe v wade doesn't say it's a life or it's not a life they just say it would be very invasive to get to that point you know uh, you've worked, you and I have worked in restaurants together, right? That's, yes, how, that's yep. how we know each other, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so, you know, dram shop laws. If so, yes. if somebody drinks alcohol in your in your establishment, you're responsible for them getting home safely. Mm-hmm. And this is my worry that abortion becomes one of those things because then suddenly, if if these pro life bills take place, I'm responsible for making sure that the mother's not pregnant. Now, in the case of alcohol, I'm not only responsible for making the person gets home. Alive and well. Tiger Woods is actually going through this right now. He uh, yes, he owns yep. a bar and and somebody drank too much and he's on the hook for it because the guy drank too much and got killed on the way home, right? And so and and this, but also if you get a fake ID, you're responsible for proving the ID is not fake. You're responsible yes. for you get fined five thousand dollars and you lose your job this year in 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 Utah. You get your liquor license revoked. You can't work any place. That serves liquor ever again, and 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 all kinds of terrible things that happen if you act if you serve a minor, even if you get their ID, if their ID wasn't them or is a fake ID, you're on the hook for it, right? Mm-hmm. And all these all these things. So what I guess then is the place to stop then, because if we make you responsible for serving somebody alcohol at a restaurant, isn't it then also going to be some form of assault if you accidentally serve somebody who said they weren't pregnant but you didn't do enough testing, just like the dram shop laws? Yes. Um, yeah. Going, going back to what you said about, um, the, the privacy, mm-hmm. um, that was off of the, I believe it's the 14th amendment is, I believe it's the 14th amendment, the right, the right to privacy. Um, I guess, I guess I know, I know it's a, uh, you have, I guess with that, that amendment and Roe v. Or Roe v. Wade, it's basically for you to have the right to put in your body whatever you want. It's it's that right to privacy. Um, if if you want to go around the corner, and and this is a very libertarian um, view on it, um, if you want to go around the corner and shoot up some heroin, by all means, you know, I, I it's illegal, but I can't stop you from doing that. Nor do I really care to stop you from doing that because it. You want the right to privacy. That is your privacy. That is your your right. I do agree with the right to privacy, the Fourteenth Amendment. I, I do because I don't want anyone else telling me Just telling me how to. Real quick, it is the Fourth Amendment. Oh, but the Fourth Amendment. But you're good. Go ahead. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, I guess I guess I do agree with that. However, where it stops for me is when there is another beating heart involved. Um, I know that. I can't, I can't tell you where she's out of one of the, one of the governors or Congress, Congress people said that because of this whole thing that went down in Alabama, she wants to make it um, now illegal for men to get vasectomies, you know, just kind of a, a throw back at you. To me, that is your own, 
this isn't me being a man trying to trying to explain that away. However, that is that is your own appendage. If if you man or woman want to go cut off your finger, go do it. I don't care. You know, that separate heartbeat is not yours to decide. I know it is in your body, but that is not your heart to decide on if it if it ends or not. Right. So. That, Let's let's talk about the because that actually leads to my next what I okay. of of the two devil's advocate question I had. Then this is the next one, which is uh, there's a lot of issues, and and I think maybe even you would make make exceptions for when it's okay to terminate a pregnancy, and yeah. and I feel like most reasonable people would say okay, it endangered the mother, and it or or it's you know rape, or it's yes. Or it's uh, you you know or or it's got medical issues. Uh, there's this one great ar- article from this girl who said she wished she had abortion from, and and the title is very provocative. And I'm like, who would wish that? But she had a child that lived to one year old, no quality of life, was going to die even before it was born, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical expenses, chronic pain the entire time, never achieved consciousness, eventually died. And I think everybody would be like, well, yeah, if you're avoiding something like that. So, so how do we navigate if from a pro-life position? How do we navigate those exceptions, those circumstances? Those ex- okay. So I, I, I do know that people like to throw out that, well, what about, what about rape and incest? I mean, you hear that constantly, right? I mean, that is, that is on, that is a very small percentage of actual abortions. So I guess kind of my throwback with that is if if you can if we can come to the conclusion i will i will come 50 if you come 50 with me how about i agree that abortions are okay if it is incest or rape however all other abortions are bad then would that would that be something that they would consider my thought no no they wouldn't consider that because they want they want the the choice and the right to have it when they for whatever they they feel they need convenience that to me is is you you say these things like well isn't it more human human and morally right to end this child's life than have it grow up in poverty and and poor my my thought first of all how racist is that you know how racist is that that you're going to end that life because he's going to grow up in, or she is going to grow up in a ghetto. That is a racist statement because I think we all know majority of, of the, the people that grow up in those are of different ethnic races than white. <laughs> you know, um, So you're, you're justifying that against, you know, uh, more of the, the people that grow up in a suburb, which happen to majority be white. To me, that that's just a, a racist remark in and of itself. But I hate that that is always thrown out there. Same with the incest and rape. I agree; those are bad, bad things. But if we can agree that okay, yes, abortions are are okay for those, but everything else, no. So, would you, but but would you make any exceptions then, like what I spoke on earlier? Because there are other issues with medical complications, and for I mean, it's a medical procedure. There's always going to be a danger involved. What is the percentage threshold at which you say, okay, this endangers the mother's life too much? Um. You're talking about the the fetus, the actual baby itself. Yeah. There, that that okay. Um, I guess it, in my eyes, I I agree with you. I, that's where I feel that human's life started at conception. I would never, I I would never agree with an abortion. Period. Because who's Whose right is it to make the call about that human's life? Look at Tim Tebow. I don't know if you know Tim Tebow's story. <laughs> his mother, his mother, was being told to have an abortion. Your kid is going to grow up uh, with a bad um, quality of life. Uh, I can't remember what he had. I can't remember off the top of my head. But basically, she was getting pressured into an abortion because of that scare tactic but because and the doctor might have actually really thought that's what was going to happen you know right um i think we all know what tim tebow turned out to be so how how would who's how is it your call to make that i guess is what is what i'm saying i don't agree with it period i mean do i am i going to feel bad for a child that that is is you know like the, the example you brought up you know in pain and and but that that is that human's right 
to have that that choice and and to be able to fight for itself i guess to be able to because not all of them are that extreme case like you said there are cases like tim tebow where it wasn't it what it wasn't it didn't happen like it was supposed to happen right you operate on faulty information and you can make a make a bad decision even if the the person who who gave you the information really believes that it will or sometimes the percentages don't work out when yes. somebody says you know there's a 90 percent chance this child is not viable you know me i sit here and i'm like well who am i to kill somebody over a percentage you know I, exactly I, I, doesn't that one I, in ten chance give them a shot i don't i mean and, and like you said okay well this child has a 90 percent. well i'm looking at yeah, but what about that ten percent? Right. You you want to come at me with the ninety? I get it. Mm -hmm. Those aren't very good odds, man. But you know what? I'm looking at that ten percent. So you're telling me there is a ten percent chance that it couldn't be that? So, like you said, I can't. It's not moral for me to end a life on on percentages anyway. Right. But I guess I I look at the glass, you know, half full rather than half empty. Of well, there is that ten percent chance. Why, why end it on a, you know, you're giving it 10%. I mean, I, I guess if I was on my deathbed and they said, you know what, you got a 90% chance that you're going to make it, or you got a 10% chance that you're going to make it uh, to, to live till next month. I'm not going to say, all right, stick it in me. Let's end this. I want to hear those. I want that 10% chance. I'm going to at least give it a shot, you know? <laughs> Right. And and I think in the case of Tim Tebow, which, by the way, I'm a sports fan and a Christian. So, of course, I know all about Tim Tebow. Yes. You yes. don't got to ask me. That. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I love me, Tim Tebow. Uh, but, yeah. But, you know, uh, it's not just his story. I think uh, the famous one that went around before that was about Beethoven, right, where they say, like, oh, you got fetal alcohol syndrome combined with yep. you know, just horrible life circumstances at every way you paint it. And it's like, well, congratulations, you just aborted Beethoven. Now, yes. is every child like this going? to be beethoven absolutely not no you know we're not saying that at all it, those 90 percent odds work out 90 percent of the time you know like, yes like, exactly there's a lot of <laughs> bad problems and a lot of mistakes that happen but at the same time when you err would you rather err on the side of giving it zero chance or giving it that 10 percent chance you know well, and, look at it look at it this way too it, it, on, on that same thought, this is just an example I use. This is a question I bring up when I'm when I'm talking to people about this exact um, part of the topic. Um, say you're deer hunting, right? You're out deer hunting. You go out with like like me. I grew up in Wisconsin. Um, there was a group of us that went out. There was five, six of us that went out every morning. So I'm out deer hunting. I'm hunting for white tail, and I hear rustling over there in the bushes. I, I got one of two or I got one of two options here. I could either assume that that's a white tailed deer and shoot it, or I could err on the side of caution and wait until I know exactly what it is. You know, people like to say, well, you know, that it's, it's not a baby until it comes out of the birth canal. It, it's not, it's not a baby until the third trimester. I mean, you got all this. Wouldn't you rather err on the side of caution regardless? You know, you, you're, you're, you're going to err on the side of caution with a lot of decisions in your life anyway. That me personally, if that, if that's my buddy back there and I shoot and kill him, I got to live with that. You yeah. know? Oh yeah. And this is the, this is really it for me is I just say, yes, the morning after pill is not the cracking of the skull. I do, I admittedly, I do feel differently about the morning after pill than I do about the, you know, the early trimester, second trimester abortions that, yes. that I saw performed. Right. You know, that, that there, there really is a different feeling there for me. However, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't encourage the morning after pill either because no, there's still either. that that room for error like what if and for me that, yep. that rips me up you know now this is and we've said a lot of me personally during this right so mm -hmm. I, I was wondering now now we talked about in the context of of the post that i made i am very much a, i would like to see abortion gotten rid of but not because we make it illegal, but because we create a culture that values that life. Yes. Yes. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Cool. Um, I was actually watching a video on, um, with Ben Shapiro talking about that mm -hmm. and he's talking about the issue. Somebody brought that up. Um, well, are, are you going to punish, you know, if we did make it illegal, right? right? If it is illegal, 
it's going to happen anyway. It's going to, you know, kind of the black market of abortions, you know, you're going to have that. Right. And, and the question got brought up, are you going to charge the person performing it? Are you going to charge the woman having it or both? And he brought up a great example and I, I couldn't have answered it any better myself. He brings up, it's not the fact that we need to sit and we need to charge everybody with it. We need to change the mindset. We need to change the culture. Of course, it's going to happen, right? Um, Let's even, let's go on like the extreme end, right? 300,000 babies are killed a year due to an abortion. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's say, let's say we change the culture. We do, you know, it is illegal um, and there's still 50,000 babies a year killed on black market abortions you know you know okay but on the flip side of that there's two hundred and fifty thousand babies that were saved you know um so yes i i do agree with you um on that i'm i'm right there with you on that (laughs) right and and so i and and i'm glad and this is really why i wanted to bring you on is because i just find that you keep saying, well, me personally, I would make this decision. And I'm like, well, do you think a politician would be any better? Is always the question that I want to ask people that want to come off as either too ardently pro-choice or pro-life. I'm just saying, don't you want politics, politicians to get out of it? They are so yes. inept with everything they do. Mm-hmm. Like, you really believe that this is the one case that they're going to get it right? And we talk about all these, I, I find that, and I talked about this with Alicia, there's all these little exceptions that we would make. Some people, yes, morning after pill, some people, no. Some yes. people, this threshold of danger to the mother, you know, what threshold is that? That's going to be a sliding scale, you know, and I would yes. just so much rather have that choice between a mother and a doctor, but I also want it to be done in a culture that values life. Yes. You know, and, and I think that that's really the, the terms that I would like to agree on in this, because I for me, I, I find it to be such a sensible middle ground, because a lot of the women that I saw and, and that I spoke to that were going through this, they were not in a situation that valued either the fetus's life or their own life. In many cases, they say, well, you got pregnant. You made that bad choice. You, you know, in many cases, it was, well, you're getting kicked out of the house now. Or, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're having this child I don't want to associate with you anymore. Or a, or, or a deadbeat father was involved. I, I think I brought up that none of these, and again, these were not, I think 91% of abortions are like morning after format. I didn't, I wasn't talking to these. I was talking to this 9%, you know, yes. heartbeat issue. But they would have somebody says, well, if it's got this medical issue, I'm not going to be there for it. So either you get an abortion or else. You know, and so, or if it's got, uh, or or if, you know, it comes to this world at all, I don't want to support it. So I'm pulling my support. And a lot of these decisions were being made. Yes, it was the mother's choice at the end of the day, but was so heavily influenced by people that didn't care about her or that wouldn't help her out yeah. um, was what I found. And so yeah. what do you think some keys are to, I guess, creating this culture? Yeah. Uh, well, I think... First and foremost, we have uh, condoms, we have birth control, we have these, these preventative measures already, right? So if you are sexually active without taking the precautions of, of birth control or, or a condom, aren't you right then and there kind of already kind of making a choice? You're rolling the dice, you're making a gamble. Yeah. I want to see the culture change to where that that, kind of when I was growing up, it was a big deal that was talked about a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't really heard, I mean, you know, I'm in my thirties now, not far from school, but I just don't see it as relevant these days as I used to. Um, just kind of the openness about it, but we do have birth control. We do have condoms. They're easily accessible. Um, Right. Back, back when you and I were growing up, it was a controversy yeah. even teaching about them. Like, guess what? The <laughs> yeah. condom exists. And now yes. it's like you can pick up condoms from your like main Got office it. at a high school. I mean, it's just yeah. they're, they're like candy. You know what I mean? You're exactly. like, oh, condom. yes, I will take one. <laughs> yes. And that's the thing. We have that there. So if you're making that choice to not use that, then you're also making the choice that you could get pregnant. And it's a choice you got to live with. I mean... You know, if you don't want to, if you don't want a baby, we have the preventative measures. This isn't, 
the twelve hundreds where these don't exist, <laughs> you know. Well, and and they existed in the twelve hundreds. I, I was, oh, um, they? yeah. They they uh, abortions have been performed for hundreds of years. There's um there's herbs that you can eat that will actually kill the fetus and the okay. and actually uh, or or some that you can eat and actually some that you can insert vaginally mm-hmm. that will that will um re- I guess make it so the lining falls off there's a lot of uh i forget exactly what they are it got ingested a lot in like the trail of tears but it's uh it is something that's been going on for a long time but yeah like you said this isn't something where you have to resort to uh, uh i guess a, a coat hanger or i guess in the in the means of of you're talking about contraceptives this is not uh a we're not on the pullout method anymore yeah i yeah, guess i didn't want exactly. to say it but yeah that, that's <laughs> that's what we're you know th- th- yeah. there are more effective forms of birth control than that nowadays. <laughs> exactly right this isn't this isn't new new information you know these have been around man and if you choose to not do that, then you better be ready to buckle up for the choices that could happen based on what you chose, you know, yeah. is my philosophy on it. Yeah, I, I, I just now had my first child, mm-hmm. you know, at 31. Cool. I had her. Uh, she's going to be 10 months soon. I made that choice because I was ready to have a baby. Right. But you know what? I don't have any babies before that. You know what I'm saying? Because I was not ready to have a baby. So because he I was one hundred percent abstinent, baby. everybody. He's a nerd. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I mean I I followed those rules and, and I never got put in that position where I had to make that choice, you know? Right. And I think as long as we come to the agreement that we don't make those choices for other people either, I think that's really where we come down. Exactly. To. And, and creating yeah. that culture that loves not just the life of a fetus, but the life of the person carrying the fetus. And that we, exactly. just, we create that loving. I, I think that this is so important to me as a libertarian because I am so freedom based to say that I this is not just what people want to make it one or the other. It's either yep. the fetus or me, you know, and, and this is and this is so much something that's manufactured by the Republicans or Democrats. They don't give two two dams about you after you're born or they, you know, and but they'll regulate the yep. crap out of you while you're pregnant or they just say, oh, yeah, go ahead. Treat it like candy. You know, like, you know, let, let's have more. Yeah. Than, you know, who cares? Have, have these recreational abortions without really looking into all of the issues going into those abortions. Why the, the misery, the quality of life is so low among people that are considering uh, especially midterm abortions. It's just yeah. so low. And, and and that's personal observation. I don't want anybody saying like, what, you're saying my life is miserable? I'm not saying that. I, what I'm saying is this is personal experience as well as some generalities that I'm making, you know, that, yes. that we understand. But the idea is that we should improve those qualities of life, that we should really focus on the love as opposed to the hate. People, Absolutely. like you said, people are looking for who to prosecute as opposed to what can we do to prevent this next time? You know, yes. it, it, shouldn't the pro-life stand be really interested in loving somebody and saying, you know, I love life and I, I want life to thrive as opposed yes. to just, I want life to exist, you know, and, and, and really that's what it means to be pro-life to me. Now, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, we're, we're at 30 minutes right now. We got to do some closing statements. Um, okay. that, uh, that will be mine. That's kind of my two cents on it. I really do want a, a culture of life without necessarily having a politician be all up in your grill about it. And I'm, I'm so glad that we can at least come to that agreement. I was so glad to know both you and Alicia, Alicia, both came from kind of that mentality and she sides on the pro-choice side of things and you side on the pro-life side of things. But ultimately you both come to the conclusion that this is a decision that is best left to a community, to a family, to people who actually have the incentive to be involved instead Absolutely. of instead of Washington D.C. But uh, yes. go ahead. Um, I'm going to give you the the last word. I did want to shout out your uh, Warrior Woodworks. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I do have a Facebook and I also have an Instagram page. It's um, Warrior Woodwork is uh, the pages and kind of the company. I build a lot of uh, American flags. Um, like I kind of talked to you about earlier today, it's a lot of, it's a lot of Americana military based stuff. Like I said, I served in the armed forces. Um, I do now work, um, up on, up on a base as a civilian, been around military my whole life, very passionate about it. A lot of stuff I build is, is, is military based or themed and Americana. I love, I love America, man. (laughs) Nothing. I got red, white, and blue running through these veins, man. So, um, 
Absolutely. Go check out Warrior Woodwork. Follow the page. I'm going to be doing a giveaway here soon on that page. So, uh, yeah, go follow it. <laughs> cool, man. All right. Well, Brendan, thanks again so much for coming on. Uh, listeners, we appreciate you being... I Again, I just want to say I'm so impressed with everyone's discourse. Of course, it's natural to be drawn to extremes on this issue. But I am so impressed with this audience uh, when we spoke to Alicia, and I hope once again, now that we've spoken to Brendan, of just the respect involved and the understanding of what we can do to to help cultivate uh, really just a better society in general. And part of this discourse is just go, has gone a lot to help me see that it's possible to see that there are really level-headed people out there that are sharing their views as opposed to yep. just the extremists. But again, uh, really appreciate it. Brandon, great having you on. And until then, everybody keep fueling the fires of Liberty.